uh, I'm so thankful na once again uh, we're together para mag-aral ng salita ng uh, Diyos, no? Okay, so we this is our first uh, Zoom Bible study during the last month of 2021 and we are so thankful to the Lord na uh, what's this he has preserved and protected us he has preserved our lives and uh, we are here we are we continue to be alive and uh, grateful to him as we study God's word so without further ado uh, we will be studying uh, Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 to 18. So three verses, no? Actually, this is part two uh, of our topic, flesh and the uh, flesh versus spirit. If you remember, we already took up part one. I, I think you can remember that, no? Pero now we are in part two. What I will do is we'll review first a bit yung part one, madali lang, no? Very briefly. And then after that, we'll go to part two of the message. So, so let me share it on the screen, no? Flesh versus uh, spirit. Okay, let me share it on the screen. Okay. There it is. So I hope you can see it. Okay, so I assume you can see it, right? Okay. Uh -oh. So flesh versus spirit, uh, Galatians chapter 5. Okay, so let me read. But I say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. I think the title of our devotional says it all. No? Uh, the main truths that we can learn from this passage is, okay. Number one, we learn that the Christian life is a present conflict. By the way, the first point is the Christian life is a life of conflict against sin while we are still here on earth even though we are already christians we still have to do battle against sin and that leads us to the first sub point the this conflict is a present conflict in other words every moment of your life you will be always struggling against sin it does not mean that you will be defeated by sin it just means you can't avoid the struggle it's part of the christian life and what is the reason for that the reason is because the flesh lusts against the spirit the spirit against the flesh these two are not compatible they can never be at peace with yes. one another so our experience will be every moment this struggle yes. or conflict okay yes. against sin then yes. If you remember, we also took up the proof or the point that this is a powerful conflict. Let us not underestimate our enemy. Sin is very powerful. We cannot defeat sin on our own. The flesh is very powerful. Its urges and desires are very strong. Left to ourselves, we cannot conquer the flesh. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. And, and I hope all of us will really learn this lesson by now. Never underestimate sin. If you become negligent, if you fail to be watchful or careful, sin might get the better of you. Okay? So let's be careful. Let's be on guard. Let's not underestimate it. And finally, under the first point, this conflict is a perpetual conflict. What does this mean? It means up to the end of our lives, up to our very last breath, we will always be fighting against sin. And if you remember, I, we looked at this verse, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? 
thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. When the Lord returns, yes, we will be delivered from sin completely. But in the meantime, in the meantime, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. The conflict again. It's once again the conflict. While we are waiting for the Lord, we will have to undergo this conflict up to the very end of our lives. But someday, when the Lord returns, He will deliver us from this body of death, body of corruption, body of sin. That lies in the future, ultimate victory. But in the meantime, we struggle. We experience the conflict. Okay, that takes care of the first point. That's just a review. We will now go to the second point. What is the second point? It's this. The Christian life is a life of dependence on the Spirit. The Bible says, I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desire of the flesh. Okay. So I already said a while ago, I already said a while ago that uh, we cannot conquer the flesh on our own, right? We do not have the strength or ability or capability on our own to defeat the urges and the desires of the flesh. We need the Holy Spirit. But praise the Lord, God gave us a wonderful promise, which we have to apply. Okay, It says, if you walk by the Spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Okay, the desires of the flesh are strong. But if we walk by the Spirit, we will be able to resist these desires and we will be able to overcome these desires. However, I will explain walking in the Spirit or walking by the Spirit in part three. So for now, I will not tackle that. Okay, I will just focus on explaining about our dependence on the Holy Spirit at this time. I will try to show what the Holy Spirit does to help us in our struggle or fight against sin. Then in part three, maybe a week or two weeks from now, I will try to explain what it means to walk in the Spirit. But for now, I would like to focus on our dependence on the Holy Spirit. We need the Spirit's help to do what? To do this, the Spirit helps us fight against sin. In Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 13, this is what the Bible says. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Have you not noticed that it is the same idea that is found here in the book of Romans? It's similar to the idea found in the book of Galatians. In Galatians, we read, if you walk in the Spirit or by the Spirit, you will not fulfill or gratify the desires of the flesh. But here it says, it's the same idea, different words, but the same idea. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The same main or important idea is being presented here. What is that idea? What is that truth? We need the Holy Spirit to fight against sin. It is only by the power of the Holy Spirit that we will be able to resist the desires of the flesh and to kill. That's the word here, no? Put to death. To kill the sinful actions of our body. Let us proceed. How does this happen? How does the Spirit help us fight against sin? So listen to this carefully. These are very important truths. The Spirit helps us fight against sin by doing what? By making us willing. You know, sin is, first of all, committed by an act of the will. How do you commit sin? By becoming willing to do sin. So something has to happen to our wills. And this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. The Spirit, what is this, changes our will. The Spirit makes us willing to do the opposite of sinning. Here is what the Bible says. 
Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Psalm 110 verse 3. It is the Holy Spirit who makes us willing. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes us willing to do God's will instead of falling into sin. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, the Bible says, It is God who works in you, and that refers to the working of the Holy Spirit in us, both to do what? Both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Let us praise God for this wonderful truth that we are not left alone in our fight against sin. He has given us the Holy Spirit who does what? Number one, he strengthens our will. Fighting against sin is not merely a matter of self-willpower. No, it has to be the Holy Spirit who will strengthen, reinforce, change your will to make us willing to be holy and to resist sin. So that is a very important work of the Holy Spirit. What is it again? He makes us willing. Left to ourselves, we want to sin, right? Left to ourselves, the desires are so strong. I want to do this. But the Holy Spirit comes in. He changes our will. And he makes us willing to do what is right, to do what is good, to do what is holy. Can it be done? Can he change our wills? Yes, because the Bible says, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. When the Holy Spirit pours, puts forth his power, we will be willing to do God's will. Okay, next, how does the Holy Spirit help us to fight against sin? By making us loving. Why do we sin? Because we love sin. That's the truth. That's the reality. We sin because we want to. What needs to happen if we are to resist temptation, if we are to do what is good and holy in God's sight, what needs to happen is for God to change our hearts and listen to this and make us love the right things. Because, you know, sin and righteousness are a matter of loving it's either you love the right thing or you love the wrong thing. If you love the wrong thing, you will sin. But if you love the right thing, God and his righteousness, you will do what is holy. So this is, this is really the battlefield, the heart. And this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. What happens according to the Bible? Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And hope does not put us to shame because... God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The Holy Spirit makes us love the right things. You know, love is a very powerful force. You cannot just do away with love. The only way, the only way to conquer your love for sin is to replace it with a stronger love. Do you agree with that? Let me repeat that. Yeah. The only way okay, to defeat your love for sin is to replace that wicked love with a holy love, a stronger love. Love for God, his word, and his righteousness. How can that be done? Through the Holy Spirit. That is how the Holy Spirit helps us to fight sin. The fruit of the Spirit is love. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit with, I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, a heart that is soft, tender, a heart that loves God, his word, his commandments, and his righteousness. That is how the Holy Spirit helps us fight against sin, by making us loving. Finally, the Holy Spirit, Okay, helps us fight against sin by giving us the power to do his will. We need power. We need strength. And the Holy Spirit also provides that power. Philippians 2.13, it is God who works in you, referring to the Holy Spirit living in us. 
The Holy Spirit is God's power. It is God who works in you both to will, we already discussed this, and to work, to do, to act for his good pleasure. He gives us the power. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. But what kind of spirit has he given us? The spirit of power. Oops, I'm sorry. Love and power, love, and self-control or sound mind. And finally, Ezekiel 36, 27. And I, will, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. Now, my, my fam, uh, dear family, this is a very important truth. You, all, you have the power. We no longer have any excuse. Before, when we did not have the Holy Spirit, we were weak and helpless. We could not obey God's laws because we were slaves to sin and to Satan. But now we have been cleansed, we have been forgiven, and we have the spirit of power, love, and self-control. So right now, we have the power. We have the power to obey. We just need to exercise faith and depend on the Holy Spirit. That is why at this point, at this stage of our lives, now that we are converted, we no longer have any excuse. Yes, the enemy is strong. Yes, the fight is hard. But we have the power. The Holy Spirit is that power. And the Bible says, do not be afraid. When you fight against sin, do not be afraid. The Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. We have the power because the spirit lives in us. Okay, that takes care of the point that the Holy Spirit helps us fight against sin by making us willing, by making us loving, and by giving us the power to do his will. We have the power. Okay, finally, last sub point. The Bible also says, okay, in this conflict, we have to be dependent against, uh, we have to be dependent upon the Holy Spirit. He helps us fight against sin, but not only that, he frees us from the condemnation of the law. Okay, I will end with this, no? but this is a difficult verse. But it is my duty as a Bible teacher to explain it as best as I can. Galatians 5, chapter, I mean, Galatians 5, verses 17 to 18. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. I said this is a bit difficult to explain. What does this mean? Okay. Number one, to be led by the Spirit is the counterpart of walking in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, you are following the leading of the Holy Spirit. So this is the other side of the coin. The spirit leads, we walk after the spirit or we follow the direction of the Holy Spirit. Okay. This refers to us Christians, to us believers, because it is only Christians, it is only those who are True believers in the Lord Jesus Christ who have surrendered their lives to God, they alone have the Holy Spirit. We will learn more about that. But it says, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, what does this mean? You are not under the law. We already mean, we already know what it means to be led by the Spirit. Okay? The Spirit is the one leading and guiding us. We follow Him. We walk after Him. What will be the benefit or the result? You are not under the law. What does that mean, you are not under the law? It means there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Now, do you remember that we are not saved by works, but by faith alone in Christ? If you try to save yourself by the works of the law, you will always fail. You will never be saved. Because no one can keep the law. That is why the Bible teaches the problem with the law is it can only condemn you, but it cannot save you. The law of God is holy and good. The law of God tells us what God's will for our lives is. 
But the problem is we cannot be saved by the law because the law does not do anything to help us. It only tells us what we should do, but it does not give us the power to do the commandments of God. That is why no one can be saved by the law and the law cannot save us. The law can only condemn us. Let me repeat that. The law can only condemn us, but it cannot save us. But the spirit is different. When a person puts his faith in Jesus Christ, that person is accepted by God not because of his good works, but because of what Christ did for him. The person who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, as his Lord and personal Savior, is forgiven of all his sins. And he will never be condemned again by the law in spite of his Savior. Why? Why? Because Christ has covered him with his righteousness. Because Christ has done for him what he could not do for himself and what the law could not do for him. So let's read. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. This Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 4, explains Galatians 5, verse 18. This is what Galatians 5, verse 18 means. It means if you have the Holy Spirit, it means that you are saved. You have put your faith in Jesus Christ. That means God will no longer condemn you for your failure because he accepts you not on the basis of your performance, but because of what Jesus did for you. That is why here is my conclusion regarding that. Do you know why Paul wrote these words? But, okay, if you are led by the Spirit, you are no longer under the law. Why did Paul write those words? If you remember, the preceding statement goes this way. The flesh lust against the spirit, the spirit lust against the flesh, so that you do not do what you want to do. In other words, Paul is saying, Paul is already anticipating that there will be failures in the Christian life. Please listen to me, my dear family. Paul is already anticipating that sometimes in the Christian life, we will fail. You cannot do what you want to do. Because the spirit lusts against the flesh, the flesh lusts against the spirit, and sometimes you will fall. Sometimes you will fail. Sometimes you will sin. And what happens? You will be discouraged. And when you are discouraged, what happens? You begin to question yourself. Am I really saved? Am I really a Christian? Will I still go to heaven? So what Paul did is to encourage us, to comfort us, to remind us, wait, wait. Don't do that to yourself. Do you not remember that you have the Holy Spirit whom you received by faith? You have believed in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is the proof that you are God's child. And do you not remember that if you are God's child, he loves you unconditionally in Christ? He does not accept you because of your performance. Our acceptance is not based on our performance so that we will not be discouraged by the fact that our obedience is not perfect in this life. Paul reminds us that if we are led by the Spirit, if we have the Spirit living in us and leading us to walk in God's ways, then we are God's children who are justified by faith alone and not by the works of the law. We are not under the law. The Holy Spirit is the proof that we are God's children. And as God's children, He loves us unconditionally even if we fail he still loves us that is the encouragement that is the, the, the that is the beauty of this verse if you are led by the law if you are god's child if you are led by the law that means you are god's child you are not under the law you will no longer be condemned he will still love you in spite of your failures and he will help you to get back up because our acceptance is not based on our performance. And our obedience is not out of fear. People who do not have the Spirit, who do not have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they're always afraid. 
if I fail, I might go to hell because I failed. But the Christian is different. Lord, you loved me unconditionally. You accepted me in Christ, not because of my performance. I will do my best to love you and obey you. But if I fail, I will be sorry for my sins, but I will never be discouraged. Let me repeat that. When a Christian fails in life, sometimes he does, sometimes he or she does, he will be sorry, he will be grieved, he will be repentant, but he will never be discouraged because he knows God accepts him not on the basis of his performance, but because of what Christ did for him. And that is why he will always rise up. He will always renew his repentance and he will continue to obey God to love God up to the very end in spite of his failures because he is a child of God. He is accepted unconditionally, loved unconditionally. His acceptance is not based on his performance and he will never be again condemned by the law. That is, that is what Galatians 5.18 means. Thanks. I hope our devotional has been a great encouragement to all of us. Always remember that if you are led by the Holy Spirit, you are not under the law. You are accepted in Christ. You are not condemned by the law in spite of your failures. Get back, get back up. Rise again and move on. Go forward. God will never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you unconditionally. That is our Amen. devotional for today. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Dennis. That was very encouraging. Um, and I that's a very good message to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And as we know, in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. Um, so we have to really keep focused on God and make sure that we're following him and focusing on him and meditating on his word day and night and resisting temptation and praying to him that um, that temptation doesn't come our way because the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak and um, we have to know that you know our flesh is weak and if we give to our flesh uh, we can we can commit sin and it says that um, in every man that is drawn to his sin it turns into our own lust and we are drawn away into temptation so just making sure that, you know, we focus on God and, and resist temptation and pray to God that, um, that we resist temp temptation. And in the Bible, it says, if you flee the devil and resist the devil, he will flee from you. So that was a very message. And we're going to open up the floor to any um, sharing that anybody has. Okay. Okay. Mom. Okay. Uh, what I got from the message is that uh, when we when we get saved, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. So we have the Holy Spirit right away. So once we have the Holy Spirit, we have now the power. But we when we know that we have the power, we 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 obey God. We we obey his promptings. It's not what we feel. Because if we will depend, sometimes our feeling is we thought we are led by the Holy Spirit, but actually it's just a feeling. But we see, we have to see to it that it's from God, that God is telling us that because of the power that we have from the Holy Spirit, so the obedience is really very important. And what I got from Dennis is we need the power of the Holy Spirit to help us fight against sin and to do what is right and holy. It is only the Holy Spirit that making us holy. And we have to fight it sin by the power of the Holy Spirit. So sometimes it's like it's like confusing because we we probably like the feeling is involved. Oh I'm 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 under the power of the Holy Spirit, but it's just it's just a feeling. But the real thing is it's really from God that telling us the, the the thing that we have to do, the right thing that we have to obey and focusing on his words, which is the important one, and prayer and really growing in our faith in Jesus Christ. 
That's all. Amen. Amen. Any Tita Lolet, who are there? Tita Nina. Ali? Akin konti lang kay daw. What I have gotten from the message from our topic is that may nag-aaway. There is a conflict between the flesh versus the spirit. May, may nag-aaway, may naglalaban our flesh and the spirit. Because ito, ating flesh is the one who is committing sin. And eh, there are mga may desires tayo na eh, uh, we, we, are, we try, we like to satisfy the desires of our flesh. So in other words, uh, kahit tayo ay saved na because we are still in our flesh, we have the tendency to commit sins. Pero ang solution lamang dito ay walang iba kung hindi sa pamamagitan lamang ng Espiritu Santo. Siya ang tutulong sa atin upang hindi tayo uh, makakuwit o makagawa ng mga kasalanan na makakasatisfy sa ating flesh. So the Holy Spirit is very important in this sin, in this area. And I remember that in our salvation, uh, after we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, automatically the Holy Spirit resides in our heart. So yung Espiritu Santong ito na nakatira sa ating puso, ang siyang uh, magtatrabaho. He is already on, in the throne of our life at siyang magtatrabaho sa ating buhay. Ito pa rin, Espiritu Santong ito ang tutulong sa atin upang hindi tayo makagawa ng kasalanan. Pero ang Christian life natin, may struggle tayo. So napakahalaga na talagang ikukumit natin ang ating sarili sa ating Panginoon ang sa Holy Spirit na siyang tumutulong sa atin upang makaiwas tayo na gumawa ng kasalanan. At sa aking sariling pagmumuni-muni at pagkakaintindi sa lesson natin, kinakailangan busugin natin ang ating Espiritu Santo, hindi ang ating flesh. Pabayaan natin mag-starve o magutom ang ating flesh as long na ang Espiritu Santo ay busog sapagkat itong Espiritu Santong ito ang magtatrabaho sa buhay natin as a Christian. As Christians, siya ang tutulong sa atin, siya ang, ang gagawa ng paraan na hindi tayo, hindi tayo ma-involve o makakumit ng mga kasalanan. Or if in case lang na tayo ay nabulid sa pagkakasala, this Holy Spirit is the one who will Help us, He will convict us of our sins. May conviction tayo as Christians eh. At hindi tutugutan ng Panginoon na tayo'y matuluyang gumawa ng kasalanan. At dahil sa unconditional love ng Panginoon, ililip up ulit niya tayo. At itong Espiritu Santong ito, ito ay may prutas. At ang isa rito sa pinag-aralan natin ay ang love. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is love. At itong pagmamahal na ito ng Panginoon ang magiging gabay natin at siyang uh, tutulong sa atin upang manumbalik tayo at maka, huwag natin i-gratify o i-satisfy ang laman. Kasi naglalaban ang laman at ang espiritu eh, dito sa ating pinag-aaralan. May konflikto. May konflikto. At hindi natin pwedeng, sabi nga ni Dennis, we cannot underestimate the power of the sin, of the flesh. Itong flesh na ito ang gumagawa ng kasalanan. So nararapat lamang na itong flesh na ito ay ma makaiwas, ma 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 yung hindi tugutan na makatuloy ang gumawa ng kasalanan. At ang pwedeng humarang laang dito ay ang Espiritu Santo na nakatira sa puso natin. So, iyon ang ating Christian life ay, sabi nga ni Dennis, ay may conflict tayo eh. The Spirit, and the flesh. But we need 
the help of the Holy Spirit so we can really fight to fight against sin. So yun lang ang pagkaintindi ko dito. And then the Spirit can make us willing, help us, making us willing, making us loving. And the other one is, what is the other one? There are only two. Gives so, us the yun. power. Ayun. Power, sound man, love. That depend upon. So itong, itong Holy Spirit, ito ay may, may power ito. Kasi ito ay, isa ito sa uh, one of the persons of the Holy Trinity. It is The, the power of the, ang aking sa simpleng sa simpleng pagkaintindi pagkaintindi ko itong Espiritu Santong ito ang siyang gagabay siyang tutulong at siyang gagawa ng paraan upang tayo maiiwas sa paggawa ng kasalanan pero kinakailangan ito'y busugin natin sa pamamagitan ng ano sa pamamagitan ng pagbabasa ng Bibleya sa pamamagitan ng pan, ng pag, pananalangin at sa pamamagitan ng paggawa natin ng will ng ating Panginoon. Pero kung tayo gagawa ng willing ng ating Panginoon, it is still the Holy Spirit who will lead us, who will teach us na guruin ang will ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. Yun lang. Lana. Thank you. Diret-diret. Yun na rin naman. Thank you. May nag-aaway. Nag-aaway yung dalawa. Can we have Tita Aning? Nandiyan ka? It's muted. Naka-mute. Wala siya. Yan na, yan na. Yan, ate. Hindi ko masyadong naintindihan ang ating ano ni Dennis kasi yung mga nakale, nakasulat dito sa ating screen ay hindi ko mabasa kasi ang liliit. <laughs> Pero magbibigay din ako ng kaunti kung opinion ano sa sa pagkakaano ko kay Eli sa Holy Spirit at sa ano sa flesh and spirit ano ang ating topic Oo. Oo, te. Sa aking pagkakaintindi, at siguro sa mga sinabi ni Eli, yun ang aking pinagbabasihan, Mm-mm. na tayo lang naman ay tao. Ano? Ika uh-huh. nga ay eh, meron tayong laman. Ano? Uh-huh. Meron tayong isipan, at meron tayong talipusuon. Na kung minsan ah, nag uuto sa ating laman ng gumawa ng minsan kasamaan. Kung ikaw ay walang Holy Spirit sa iyong sarili, ang pumapasok lagi sa iyong eksipan ay hindi maganda. Pero kung may Holy Spirit ka at lagi kang tumatawag nananalangin sa Panginoon na Lord, gabayan mo po ako na sana'y maging matuwid ang aking landas na patutunguhan. Huwag mo po ninyong idulot na ako po'y maging masama. Ituro mo sa akin ang tama akong gawin. Sapagat ako'y tao lang po na merong isipan, may puso at may laman. Uh-huh. Kaya ang Holy Spirit ang siyang pinaka-importante para sa atin. Sabagat kung Holy Spirit at may pananali ka sa Diyos, natatakot kang gumawa ng kamalian, lalo na sa ating kapwa. Sa aking pananalangin, kada gabi at sa madaling araw, Lagi kong ipinapasok sa aking isipan, Lord, ako po ay tao lamang na maaari magkamali sa aking mga gawain sa araw-araw. Kaya ngayong umagang ito at ngayong gabing ito, ako po ay humihingi sa inyo ng kapatawaran. Idiretso po mo ang tunay na daan na patungo po sa inyo. Sapagat ang Holy Spirit 
ay inyo pong idulot na ibigay sa akin na ako po ay gumawa ng matuwid at ng hindi po masama, lalo po sa aking kapwa. Kaya kapag ang ating ang ating ilalagay sa ating isipan at kalooban na tayo ay gumawa na kabutihan ang Holy Spirit ang siya nating gabay. Siya magtuturo sa atin ng mga magagandang bagay. Pero kung ang ibubutang natin sa ating katawan, ang pless ang laman na siya magbibigay sa atin sa hindi matuwid na daan, tayo ay magkakasala sa Panginoon. Kaya kailangan lagi natin ang gabay, ang pasensya, at lagi natin ilagay sa atin sarili na tayo bigyan ng pagmamahal, lalo na sa ating pamilya. Ituro mo sa amin ang gabay ng katotohanan. Ituro mo po sa amin ang nararapat po namin gawin sa araw-araw sapagkat ang panahon po ngayon ay napakalaki ng pagkakaiba. Sapagkat kailangan po ngayon namin ang lumapit at tumawag po sa inyo, Panginoon. Palagi nyo kami patatawarin sa aming mga kasalanan. Uh-huh. At Amen. bigyan mo po nyo kami ng kaalaman na ang inyo pong Holy Spirit ay umalib sa aming katauhan. Uh-huh. Na ibigay nyo sa amin ang tunay na daam patungo po sa inyo, Panginoon. Iyan ang Amen. lagi kong idinihingi at idinadasal ko sa Panginoon. Kung tama ang aking sinabi para sa ating leksyon, rest tama. and spirit. Kung isasama natin ang ating katawan, ang ating katawan ang siya nag-uutos, ang ating isipan, ang ating puso, para gumawa ng kasamaan, magagawa natin yan. Sapagkat tayo laman lang, may laman tayo. Kaya natin hmm. gawin ang nararapat natin gawin. Pero kung ang Holy Spirit ay nasa sa iyo, takot kang gumawa ng kasalanan. Ginagabayan ka ng Panginoon Diyos. Tinuturoan ka ng katotohanan at matuwid na daan. Amen. Kung ang Holy Spirit ay nasa Amen. sa iyo at ipinagkaloob sa iyo ng Panginoon sapagkat tayo ay kahit tumatawag kapag ang Holy Spirit ay hindi sumasanib sa atin, wala rin tayong magagawa. Ang ating ring maano ang ating laman ang siya nag-uuto sa atin. Pero kung ang Holy Spirit ang siya magbibigay, ay ang ating laman, isipan at talipasoon, tayo makakaiwas sa anumang bagay na hindi maganda. Kung sa Panginoon tayo, hihingi ng tulong sa lahat ng bagay. Iyan lang masasabi ko. Kung tama Bless and spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Tia. Yung nang andyan pa, si Lorisel, si Lolet, nandyan? Sino ba nga andyan? Hindi naman namin makita. Ah, oh, andito pala si Jun. Welcome, Joy. Hello, Hello Joy. Hello. Thanks. Si, si Lolet. Andyan pala si Lolet. Lolet. Let? Oh, next. Oh. Si Joy, Joy, gusto mo mag-share, Joy? Hindi ko po nasimulan. <laughs> Joy! <laughs> Ay, pabangkin ang Tita Aning. Apa? Thank you for, for joining. Gusto ka na. Parang ang nakaintindihan ko lang po eh, yung Holy Spirit po ay eh, parang kompas po sa righteousness. Amen. Amen. Oo. Oh, oh. Ano pa, Neng? Tapos yung parang yung flesh po, parang ayun lang po yung parang nag uh, parang siya po yung parang sinusubok po tayo dun sa ating pananampalataya para maging, para po maggabay dun sa ating pananampalataya. <laughs> Alam mo, while Dennis was talking, may ano ako eh, may pumasok sa isip ko eh. Alam ano? mo yung superhero, Darna, diba? Ding, ang bato. So, nilagay ko dito, oh, yung Hello. ano nang, habang nagsusulat yung Holy Spirit, tapos 
ding ang Bible, ding ang prayer para yung pumapasok sa isip ko na kasi di ba sabi ni ni Dennis, what does the spirit do, di ba? The spirit the, the spirit makes us willing to do the opposite of sin and make us loving. So all we have to do is activate it, di ba? Kasi binibigyan tayo ng power. Yes. Di ba? The mess na the Bigyan Holy Spirit. Ng power ng Panginoon, ng Holy Spirit. So, Lord, Lord, thank you, thank you, Lord. Pambihira, magkakaroon ako ng power to resist sin. Magkakaroon ako ng power to love. Eh, activate ko na lang. So parang <laughs> yun ang pumasok sa isip ko na now I know what I know about the Holy Spirit. So ngayon, parang kasi mahilig akong mag-visual, so nagsusulat ako, may mga may mga ano ako sa phone ko, may mga pini-print out ako na. So now I'll have a make I'll make a sign na parang Holy Spirit. Na once na I'm in the world na pag nagkaroon na ako ng issue, conflict, activate ko na kagad. Ding ang Bible. Ding ang bato. Ding ang prayer. So parang yun ang yun ang nag-gets ko sa sa ano natin ngayon kay Dennis. Kasi parang na-encourage siya ko kasi sabi nga ni Tita Aning, the pandemic very timely yung tinuro sa atin ni Dennis kasi parang nakaka we should really yung parang wag na nating isipin yung problema kasi hindi talaga natin malabanan eh. How do we parang we just have to really give it to all to God and we'll activate the Holy Spirit. Kaya ngayon, after this, I'll activate the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Oh, masasabi ko lang is that greater is He that is in us, which is the Holy Spirit, than He that is in the world, which is the flesh. So we know that day by day we are always walking, and the flesh and the spirit are always in conflict, in contest. Uh, they're always uh, fighting, but we should always walk in the spirit, and that we should always crucify the flesh daily in order to conform into the spirit of God. And our behavior says it all that it's our behavior should be centered on the word of God, on our prayers, and uh, that um, walk in the spirit and not in the passion of desires of the flesh. Uh, sabi nga ni Ate Eli kanina, what are the fruit of the Holy Spirit? So the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, power, joy. Peace, joy, kindness, peace. gentleness, self-control, self patience. Self patience. So while uh, I'm flesh, what are the, can I say also fruit of the flesh? The works of the flesh. Oh, the works of the flesh. So ano yun, di ba? the last of the flesh, the last of the eye, and the pride of life. So talagang it's always in conflict. So ang kailangan talaga natin is the word of God, prayers, and always because once you receive Jesus Christ, parang salvation na rin, once we already receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, then automatically the Holy Spirit resides in our heart. And then, yeah, we're still in the flesh and we're fighting. Dahil hanggang sabi nga ni Lord, hanggang narito pa tayo because everything is just temporary. What we are really arguing for is the eternity, eternal life. Yun naman talaga ang, 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 ang purpose natin. But as of this time that we are still on the flesh and we should always have to fight, always with the word of God, always have to, to have all those... Um, guard everything, the weapon that we need, uh, the uh, ano ba ito, Ali, yung sinasabi natin, we have the, uh, the spirit, huh? no, 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 armor, no, no, no. armor of God. Armor of God, yes, we should always put on the armor of God while we are still here in the world and nothing could be wrong. And most especially is prayers. And then once we sin, because we are, we are being convicted, once we sin, okay, once we sin, we can always, uh, uh, we can always repent. The most important is repent and always put on the armor of God. So that's what I can share with this. And we always remember that 
God is still in his throne and he is in control of everything. So we, we should always remember, greater is he that is in us, which is the Holy Spirit, than he that is in the world. So nothing can be wrong. When we are standing in the solid ground, the word of God, so we should always be fighting and fighting. And it's so nice to fight. We said, ah, natalo ko na naman siya. Nanalo na naman ako because I never gave it into sin. So we can always put our shoulder and say, God is good. God is great because he never leaves me nor forsakes me. He is always there with me and he will always run me back because of his love and because Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. At yung by law, at least ang, ang pagkakaintindi ko doon, Demis, is it is the preparatory for Jesus Christ for the New Testament because what is in the law that is uh, in the Old Testament, these are all the preparation for the coming Savior. Pinipipare ni Lord ang mga tao ang mga during that time in the Old Testament. So God the Father is preparing those people for the coming Savior and if that is for His Son to come and save the world because of sin. The, the harmony, this harmony between the flesh and the spirit, it is because of when sin comes in the world. So that's all I can share. And thank you. So we have the power, we have the will to control it, to resist the devil, to resist sin, because we know that greater is he that is in us that, than he that is in the world. Thank you, dear Lord, that through this technology via Zoom, you were able to gather us, my dearest family, for uh, our Bible study and to know more about you. May you continue to help us to grow in the knowledge of you. Father God, narinig ko ninyo ang request ng kada isa sa amin. Salamat sa pagkakatong ito na ito ay aming uh, naipadadala sa iyo ang mga request namin ang request po ng kada isa at alam ko po aking ama na kami po ay inyong napapakinggan. At ako po ay na, na kami po ay nananalangin aking ama na sana po ay tugunan ninyo ang mga kahilingan at ang request ng bawat isa. We know the Lord that you have said that we must delight in you and you will grant the desires of our hearts. So aking ama, ibinibigay po namin sa inyo ang amin pong mga request at namin pong inaasahat we are praying the Lord na bibigyan po ninyo ng katugunan ang kahilingan ng bawat isa sa amin. May you continue to bless every one of us, the Lord. May you continue to bind us in the band of your love. And thank you, Father, for the topic, for the lessons that we have learned tonight na kinakailangan na kami po ay uh, magkaroon ng patnubay o kami ay tul laging gabayan ng Espiritu Santo sa lahat ng aming gawain sa amin pamumuhay sa mundong ito upang hindi po kami mabulid sa pagkakasala. At magkagayon pa man aking ama na kami kung kami man po ay nahuhulog at nakakagawa ng kasalanan alam po namin aking ama nang dahil sa inyong walang hanggang pagmamahal nang dahil sa pagbibigay niyo ng buhay ng inyong anak at kami po ay mapagtakpan ng inyong banal na dugo upang kami maligtas sa aming kasalanan naniniwala po kami aking ama tanan ng palataya na patuloy po ninyo kaming ira-rise up ililift up po niyo kami upang sa ganun makapagpatuloy po kami ng aming pamumuhay kristiyano at ang, ang amin pong pananampalataya ay tulungan po niyo kami na lumago. Tulungan din po niyo kami, aking ama, na isuot namin ang armor of uh, the armor of uh, our uh, the, the, the spirit, the, how do you call the spirit of God upang aming magampanan at huwag kami tuluyang mabulid sa pagkakasala. Help us, the Lord, to live a good life. Help us, the Lord, to fulfill and reach the righteousness that you want us to do in Jesus Christ, the Lord. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for the protection that you are giving to us. Thank you, the Lord, that even may uncertainty ang buhay sa panahon ito. Nevertheless, the Lord, hindi po niyo kami pinababayaan, hindi po niyo kami iniiwanan. At sa amin pong pagtatapos sa aming Bible study, aking ama, 
Sana po aking ama ay lagi po bigyan kami ng pagkakataon na kami ay makapagpatuloy ng aming pagbabible study sa ating <laughs> pamilya, pamilya upang sa ganun po aking ama ay kami po ay lumago sa aming pananampalataya at ang inyong unconditional na love na ibinibigay sa amin ay aming maramdaman at ang inyong will sa aming buhay ay siya naming magampanan. Thank you for everything, dear Lord. Patawarin po niyo kami sa aming mga pagkakasala. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.